each and every one here. Is audio clear for me? Yeah. Uh, thank you. So greetings and uh, namaste to each and every one of the participants who have gathered here for an important talk on spirituality and law or applied spirituality and law and its consequent effect on public policy or people who are involved in public policy, how they think about law or what they should think about law. So it is a great honor for me to be a part of this uh, exercise which uh, this department school of government and public policy of the general university uh, which is well known and that is spearheading pioneering initiatives and the center for complexity economics applied spirituality and public policy and the team which is working on this along with our uh, dear professor dr naresh singh and the coordinator of this uh, program ms divya and the entire team and the students who have gathered here for undertaking this course. It's a great joy for me to share some of my experiments, some of my insights or some of the challenges that I'm facing. I know I teach this subject for the last five to six years and that too, the paper is for six full months. The biggest challenge would be for me to compress it in say 90, 90 minutes or one hour and then just take question and answer sessions. So what I'm planning to do, how I would like to take it ahead is to show four to five slides in which I have put what are the key themes that will be discussed in this. That will prepare the mind in the direction in which we want to take this ahead. And that will give us a focus of how we have to go about and the questions that might come or that will come to you can be very well answered. To show the screen, Applied Spirituality and Sustainable Development Policy. So what I'm planning to discuss very quickly is what is spirituality, the possible definitions and the conclusions that we have about that. And also most importantly, what is not spirituality, which very often people uh, take uh, that term into different uh, dimensions, which we should be very careful about. And then a very interesting question that always comes up in my class or the training program is how is spirituality different from religion? Because ultimately spirituality needs to be culled out from a source, which is religion for us at the moment. So we need to transcend from the religious sections to move towards the core essence of spirituality. So where is the drawing line? How are we going to do that? And are there are any different uh, kinds and types and models of spirituality? Yes, largely I have brought it down to two levels. One is world and life increasing model and world and life negating model. Though progressive groups from all the religions and the traditions, they have come to an understanding because of the world situation that we need to think differently. Having said that, so there are a lot of interesting sidelights on that which we we'll discuss. Then comes, can there be a secular spirituality? Because that is exactly where people are uh, worried about or concerned about what are the challenges in the definition of the term uh, secular spirituality. Rather, we should move towards what is called the true spirituality or applied spirituality as this university speaks about. And I have given a ninefold element for the definition of the term true spirituality, which is in three sets. The first set being oneness, multiplicity, harmony, which is what the constitution defines as equality, liberty, fraternity. And the practical aspects of it is the non-sectarianism, non-dogmatism, the integration of knowledge, which is exactly where the human challenges are. Though we know the value system, though we know the ideals, but how do we bring it? We need an integration of knowledge at all levels. We need to be non-sectarian. We need to be non-dogmatic in our approach. Otherwise, spirituality is taken by the, the orthodox and the traditional group as something against science. And those who have a scientific and analytical background, they think spirituality is something, a mumbo jumbo or abracadabra of uh, things, and they don't want to get into that. So we need some sort of a balance, some sort of a middle path, some sort of an integration. The third set being the continuity, the interconnectedness of the past, present, and future, 
which is most useful for sustainable development and public policy. One of the biggest challenges from the constitutional perspective or legal perspective about policy making or policy interpretation is how do we move from the present towards the future without cutting from the past? How do we do that? Very often the constitutionality test of a particular policy which the executive brings is tested on this. I will come to that a little later. Then the healing or the reconciliatory and restorative measures and the well-being, which I call it as the full justice, the highest justice that is possible. So this is the fourth question which we will address. So if you see the three sets, they come as core values, the constitutional law. And what are those core values? Oneness, multiplicity, and harmony. In constitutional terms, equality, liberty, fraternity. But that is also the spiritual principle. I will come to that to show how spirituality and constitution are actually together. But at the moment, because of our limited understanding of our own experience of this reality, we don't see the merging of the integration of the two. The practical application of it, how to take the core values and bring it to a practical level. And what is the process involved in the work? How do we do that? So it comes out like this spiritual experience plus spiritual knowledge put together gives a tool for applied spirituality or true spirituality with which a person in the governance and executive legislature, judicial interpretations or policy making think tanks or researchers, scholars, students, they will have a very good tool to handle all kinds and all challenges of life. How do we do that? These are the four models which I have spoken about. You can do it in the field of education. We can do it in the field of training. We can do it in the field of integration or application. How do we do that in each and every field? I will explain it later. It's teaching and research in terms of education. In training, experiential and skills model. And in integration, we need to assess where the problems are, hiccups are. What is the assessment that we have? What is the diagnosis that we are going to make out of it? And how do we apply it? This is how it comes out, the ninefold elements being applied. And how do we do it at a practical level? I am here going to show what is that I have done for myself. I struggled a lot to bring this. I will put my own example here in, the, in this slide so that you can see how I have worked it out. So this is how it is. So to come back, these are the broad themes which I am going to work for which I'm going to work on and share with all of you. Before I proceed, I request all the participants to pay close attention to some of the key words that I'm going to use because they determine our focus. I also humbly request all the participants to ask me any questions in between if you want by raising the hand and the icon button is there or you can also put it in the chat box and if you want, he can also interrupt me by opening up the mic and speak. Absolutely fine. As I have said, it's a subject that I teach for six months. I need to complete it in an hour and more than 10 minutes. So I will be presuming certain things and going ahead. So if I am presuming too much, kindly feel free to interrupt. Let it be a free flow of conversation, a dialogue and an exchange of ideas so that I also get to know where I need to concentrate more or uh, I also get to know how I need to deliver it well. So the first point, the first questions out of the six questions that I'm going to answer here. First is what is spirituality? You all must have got various definitions of spirituality. Each and everyone defines spirituality in different ways. I would like to summarize all angles of spirituality or definitions of spirituality in one single point. What is that? Spirituality is experiential. It is an experience. What is the nature of that experience? It is an inner experience or an internal experience, or you may call it as a deeper experience or higher experience. Do we have that experience? Yes, we do have, but we are not conscious of it. We are getting influenced by the spirit and self, but we don't know how we are getting it. We don't know where the origin of it. Some of the spiritual experiences that we all have is love, is peace, is compassion, is collectivity, is harmony, is equality, forgiveness, and so on. 
तो स्पिरिचुअलिटी इज एन एक्सपीरियंस नंबर वन नंबर टू इट इज नॉट द सेम एक्सपीरियंस एस वी थिंक ऑफ द माइंड इमोशन सेंसेशन ऑफ द बॉडी द साइंस सेज द एनाटॉमी सेज द बायोलॉजी सेज द न्यूरोलॉजी सेज द साइकोलॉजी एंड साइकेट्री सेज वी आर कंपोस्ड ऑफ फोर मेजर डायमेंशंस और एनर्जी यूनिट्स व्हाट आर दे वन इज माइंड नेक्स्ट इज इमोशन third is the sensation the nervous energy level the fourth is the body spirituality is the experience outside this domain of the mind emotion sensation and the body it is something either inside or outside this domain though it can impact the mind emotion sensation and the body it is perfectly possible but as such the storehouse of this experience is behind the mind or above mind behind emotion or above emotion behind the sensation or above sensation behind the body or above body outside the body that's why we say spirituality is a transcendental experience it's an experience which is giving something which initially mind doesn't understand emotion doesn't understand sensation doesn't understand the body doesn't understand that's why the tradition says that you have to close the mind emotion sensation and the body but they don't tell you to permanently close the mind emotion sensation and the body once you close the mind emotion sensation and the body and get to that experience they are asking you to come back into the mind into the emotion into the sensation into the body into the very life into this world and then do things in a much better way now the question is what sort of experience that i would be getting if i have an experience outside mind emotion sensation and the body the nature of experience follow me carefully is that when we have an experience outside mind emotion sensation and body that particular experience brings a sense of oneness which means there is a zone of oneness inside us or above us or behind us which is part of us but the current reality of what we call b i this bodily corporeal reality in which mind is operating based on the five sensory networks passing through emotions passing through sensations and operating through the body is not having the experience of it till you touch that so when we say spirituality is an experience outside mind emotion sensation and body that does not mean that it is cut off from mind emotion sensation it is very well linked that link needs to be done that link needs to be connected bridge like so when we have that experience of that spirit or you may call it a self people use the word god divine self soul atman jeevatman parmatman or each and every religion each and every tradition defines it in different different ways but point is there is altogether a fundamentally a transformational experience outside mind emotion sensation in the body in which when we experience we feel a sudden oneness we feel a sudden freedom which we cannot even think of in the mind which we cannot even feel in the existing emotion which we cannot even hold in our sensation which we cannot even house it in our mind because it's a huge transformational experience it is unlimited source the cosmos the universe everything is built on that that is the nature of the evidence which all spiritual masters talk about which we all can experience it is not outside us it is not difficult we need to do a little work and we will get it so spirituality is an experience outside mind emotion sensation of the body in which the nature of the experience is sudden oneness sudden freedom and sudden love and passion now one question that comes to us is who is the one who is experiencing the sudden oneness sudden freedom and sudden love it is we only that means there is still some kind of a feeble link between your personality which you are currently and that's zone but the link is little thin we need to strengthen it if we strengthen it that comes down into our mind that comes down into our emotion that comes down into our body 
and the sensations as a result of it everything that we will do in our life will be manifesting the oneness it will be manifesting the liberty it will be manifesting the liberty. that's my simple magic formula that i have in order to integrate spirituality with constitution legal system divinity integration also. so to quickly recap there is all together a different experience like how we have rational experience logical experience experience based on reason similarly there is another experience even psychology neurology accepts the concept of what is called self there is something that is timeless there is something that is boundless there is something that is spaceless so that experience sense of losing the time sense of losing the space sense of losing the boundary is what gives us the sense of oneness what a great experience it would be to live with the certain sense of oneness we will feel i will be sitting in this house yet i will feel this whole universe is part of me yet i am part of this whole universe such a beautiful experience and it is an eternal experience it will be continuously going on because the whole universe the whole cosmos everything is structured on this now an important point comes to us here which is relevant for public policy law spirituality judicial integration is that legal systems are continuously trying to achieve the sense of oneness in the name of equality oneness and equality are actually together the legal system wants to achieve the freedom the rights for each and every one because there is an inherent liberty in everything nothing is bound by it. legal system or the constitution wants to achieve everything for all of us in a harmonious way the fraternity because the source of it is here so the equality liberty fraternity the constitutional clause this constitutional clause as well as the universal values of all legal systems all over the world they are actually dependent on the spiritual principle of the equality in the name of oneness here which is above inside us liberty which is there in this freedom inside the fraternity which we want to achieve which is there in this sense of love and compassion so i used to say legal people lawyers and judges and law makers and think tanks they have to practice spirituality if they talk about oneness if they talk about equality if they talk about non discrimination and so on if they talk about freedom of rights if they talk about compassion individual collective sustainability and so on they can't avoid it they have to do it in a way in a way legal system and the social systems they are struggling to get that and they are operating on this model only but the problem is they go by trial and error experimentation take for example what was equality class or dignity class in the year 1952 when constitution of india was formed is that the same definition of equality right now in 2022 no it is not professor param if if i just check i thought kushal did you have a question or comment uh no sir not yet not yet oh okay all right go ahead sir so legal system or the social system and governance courts and interpretation they are also struggling to bring this but they take so much time to interpret one principle 60 years 70 years 140 years one years in the meanwhile so many injustices happen injuries happen societies gets divided so we it is within us if we want to be smart and if we want to make the life happy and easy for all without injury or minimum injury then we need to adopt this model as i said the equality class of uh, article 14 or article 21 right, right to liberty class in the indian constitution what it was in the year 1952 when the constitution was formed is one and the same but the interpretation of it has changed so drastically not even a single comma or a proposition has changed in the constitution but the interpretation what it was in 1952 to what it is right now in 2022 in the span of 75 years my god what a change huge which means we are operating on the constitution as and when our consciousness develops which is going by the trail and error damage of this rather we must adopt a model which is conscious and voluntary and proactive 
In fact, public policy from the point of view of constitution, though I'm not an expert on public policy, but I see public policy from the constitutional and legal perspective is the one tool which is trying to help the legal policy, sorry, legal lawmakers to think about how to mitigate or how to work it out, how to course correct. They are the in-between people who have the knowledge to see how to apply, how to do. There are stages for doing that. Of course, I'm speaking from the legal point of view. You may know, you, you all may know better since you are studying public policy as a separate subject. So keep this in mind, your spirituality needs to be applied. So this is the spirituality which we want. So what is not spirituality comes the next question, which is philosophy is not spirituality, psychology is not spirituality, ethics is not spirituality, morals and value systems, they are not spirituality, though they all may aid and support and augment the process. Definitely, with certitude. But by itself is not spirituality. Otherwise, a professor of philosophy can become a spiritual master. There is a difference between a spiritual master who has influenced millions of people for thousands of years. Where is the power being drawn from? It is from somewhere. It is from the higher consciousness, from the universe, from the cosmos, from the supreme truth. But initially we enter into philosophy, ethics and moral in order to understand that. Not a problem. It is an outside in approach. But there is also another method is to start from inside out. Both are equally valid, but we must not confuse spirituality is just a philosophy or psychology or disputation of a particular argument, whether this is right or that is right, this is good or that is good, morals and ethics and so on. Though they all help you to move towards. As such, everything helps you to move towards where we want to go or how to find the true meaning and purpose of life. This is the most important thing that we need to keep in mind. Whether spirituality is different from religion, this is one big question that very often I face. We need to keep in mind when spirituality was originally formed by the masters across different traditions all over the world, they never thought of religion. Religion word is really there to obey. That came later after the spiritual master, realist master, enlightened master, after they have left the earthly scene, those who lived around him, they have to bring some kind of a mental construct according to the social, geographical, political, food habits, resources and so on. So they developed different patterns of how do we follow that master based on the resources that were available at that point of time in the region. So religion formed, social cultures formed, different ideas and rituals formed. They are all very helpful. But by itself, it's not spiritual. They all help us to move towards them. We should not get stuck there. We should use all those elements and then move towards the source for which these were created, for which these were useful for us to move towards that. So, spirituality is different. Are there different kinds and types and models of spirituality? Yes, it is there. Some spiritual models, they say that we don't believe in this world. This world is a maya. This world is an illusion. This world is materialistic. So we don't want this world. We don't want this life. Some say, no, this world is spiritual. This world is God. This world is truth. This world is perfection. This world is love. Different religions have different approaches towards this. Even within the same religion, some religions talk about world embracement and life embracing or life affirmative. Even within the same religion, there are groups which say, no, we don't accept life and world. This is an illusion we should not go about. So what is the correct understanding that we should have as public policy students, as public policy participants, as public policy thinkers, as lawyers, as judges, as lawmakers and thinkers? What is that we should have? If we are interested in world, if we are interested in removing the inequality in the world, discrimination from the world. If we are interested in bringing freedom and liberation to each and every one who lives in the world, if we want to bring everyone a sense of fraternity and love and sweetness of daily life, we must accept love. We must accept love. But the 
problem that comes here. This is a practical problem. So what is that I said? Spirituality means the emotion, sensation, mind, body, the four layers, mind, emotion, sensation, and body. Outside that is the spirit, the self, the soul. Either it is above or it is inside. But in order to realize this inside or realize this above, we have to necessarily withdraw from this for some time and go there. And in order to withdraw from this external reality of our current reality, we have to see this, this is not real for us. But when we say this is not real for us for some time, for the time being, this only is real. My, my pursuit and my journey is towards this. My pursuit and journey is towards this. That does not mean that this is unreal. That does not mean that this is illusion. It is illusion and a maya and materialistic in a sense because we have not realized that self which is fully powerful, which is full of oneness, unity, which is full of freedom and liberty, which is full of love and fraternity inside of it. So once we realize this here, once we realize this here, we must again come back, again get into light. When I studied some time back about the Buddhist Dhammapada and certain other religions. There are very crucial words which distinguishes these things. We need to be very careful. Each and every religion we are reading. Because the language, the interpretation of those masters who expressed and experienced the truth. Those words are according to our interpretation, which our mind thinks. To give a quick example, Buddha speaks about right to desire. He never said to cancel the desire. Have a balanced desire. Similarly, in the Vedas and Upanishads, Gita and so also, they also talk about the middle path, the right approach, the harmonious approach. In each and every religion, we need to see this. So what we need to keep in mind is that in our pursuit to realize the Supreme Truth, for the time being, we will be withdrawing from the current reality, which is the external reality of mind, emotion, sensation, body, with the idea that we are going to pursue an ultimate reality, with the idea that we are going to experience the greater reality, with an idea that we are going to get awakened to the supreme reality. That does not mean this reality in which our body is living, our nervous energy is living, our emotions are happening and mind is thinking is wrong or invalid or so we have to have this correct distinction otherwise we forget this it happens even in our own personal life when we are deeply involved in something when somebody is talking to us it doesn't we don't talk to them we just say keep quiet for some time i'm doing some work i'm interested in a particular project i need to give full time to it that doesn't mean that i am cancelling this person or cancelling that project i am concentrating on it once i get into this and realize it completely then i get back again to it i used to give this brilliant example of a phd scholar who takes phd he, what does he do he immediately gets too much only focused into the library and research and reading books is completely withdrawn the all gel is even while walking he thinks about that. even while doing things he thinks about that. But what happens after some time? Once he caught hold of the truth, the meaning by which he can solve the problem, he gets back. He completes his thesis and gets back to teaching profession. And with great power, he enters again. Yes, I have done it. I got it. This is the truth I have found out. We should also have that kind of approach. So to come back. So different models are there. We must adopt a life embracing world of primitive model in which we will take time on a daily basis. Not that we will just go away for six months or seven months, two days or two weeks, but on a daily basis while sitting in my cabin before going to bed, five minutes, or on a daily basis, either in the morning or in the evening, get back to the core reality inside me in the room. And then again, quickly draw in that power of oneness, of freedom, of energy, of love. And then again, go. So, the true spirituality is the most interesting thing that we need to keep in mind. So, it operates in three sets. I will show you the slide here. It will be very useful for you. So, the core values, which is already there in the constitution, 
on the bracket on the right side you can see oneness is equal to equality in the constitution multiplicity which we experience in the inner consciousness the variety which we feel the diversity which we feel in the nature is actually the liberty the harmony that we get from that is actually the fraternity so one who has experienced the sense of oneness in the higher consciousness in the inner consciousness he will not be able to discriminate anymore he will have the equality one who experiences the multiplicity he understands the liberty he even allows the other person to commit a mistake because that is his way of growing that is his way of the soul choosing a particular path to grow it does it is not seen as a mistake he also grows of course our mistake should not be injuring somebody understandable so harmony is also like that so these are the core values which are spiritual in nature which has which have a corresponding correlation point in the constitution in the form of preamble equality liberty fraternity in fact constitution also talks about unity integrity and dignity in the preamble itself very interesting the entire constitution which starts with the preamble it starts with the spiritual foundation but we have forgotten that our civilization has become very analytical in the name of modern uh, uh, approach to life we are only thinking through the mind thinking through the emotion thinking through only the sensation and the body but we don't see anything else the biggest challenge for sustainability is how to connect the inner core with everything the very fact that i as an individual i can only think through only through the mind i cannot think about the nature i cannot think about the flora and fauna so the sustainable development key solution is in the spirit it is in the self because the spirit inside me and above me is the same spirit that holds the nature same spirit that holds each and every resource same spirit that holds everything in time and space without any division that's the ultimate sustainable development policy under law which i used to teach intergenerational equity and intra generational equity they talk about so the practical application of it non sectarianism so while applying the principle we need to have inclusivity obvious we cannot be sectarian in our approach so which means if there is some kind of a sectarian approach in our spiritual practice or religious traditions we must transcend that next non dogmatism the dogmatism is that we don't want to experience anything beyond that we don't want to do anything beyond what the mind sees beyond mind beyond emotion beyond sensation beyond the body we feel it is unreal because it is invisible because it is not tangible so we think that it is not true if visibility and tangibility is the core criteria of evidence to prove something that exists then love also is invisible love is also intangible but the impact of love impact of peace the tangibility and the evidence of peace and love is the most effective most interesting and most beautiful in life you cannot avoid that so the reduction is analytical thinking which the current educational standards all over the world which is what shaped the human civilization since the industrial era nothing wrong in that we have those who teach spirituality or speak spirituality they don't condemn anything but they reason out everything they rationalize it so we need to see how we have evolved beautiful the industrial era gave us rational thinking of course it went beyond a particular point as a result of which we had to suffer a lot but that's how we learn it seems but we don't commit that mistake again that's why we talk about the spirituality which interconnects everything so to come back so we need to think of an approach in which the subjective evidence is also taken into consideration not just the objective evidence alone ultimately the constitution the legal system the judiciary everything it interprets is intangible how do you define dignity dignity for me is different from dignity for another person dignity that i wanted to have it in the morning is different from the dignity that i want to have it it is completely invisible and reflex changing according to various factors so the inner life cannot be completely sidelined or uh, disconnected simply because it is not provable by evidence of course nowadays the modern science and technology psychiatry psychotherapy neurology hypnotherapy 
they all have come to an understanding that the inner dimensions can also be proved whose impact takes place in the body for example just to give a quick example fear is an imagination of the mind but it affects the body the most it changes the temperature of the body it changes the pressure of the body but fear as such where does it exist it exists only in the mind what they call the psychosomatics and so on to <clears throat> so come back we have to be non dogmatic and we have to integrate all the disciplines of experience integrate all the disciplines of experience means we have so far understood science and technology on one side social sciences and humanities on another side arts on another side and vocational courses on the other side but we have forgotten all these disciplines of knowledge they deal with the human they deal with life which is common for all which is one for all and they all operate in this time and space and reality in which we all share the other means so integration of disciplines ought to be the very fact that the cross disciplinary multidisciplinary transdisciplinary interdisciplinary they all are pushing us the evolution is pushing us nudging us move forward move forward to see the other side i used to say when i studied law for the first time say 25 years back i thought law is just a system of rules and regulations the moment i started digging into the rights i found culture the moment i got deep into culture i saw society the moment i go deeper into the society i saw anthropology i saw religion i saw spirituality i saw psychology i saw history so many things started coming so each and every subject when they go a little deeper they will find the knowledge and experience of the other subjects converge there nobody can avoid it so integration is a very crucial thing for spirituality then finally the process in the work when we need to work we have to think of continuity we cannot all of a sudden start spirituality in our policy making or legal thinking or judicial thinking we will start afresh right from now no it is not like this past present and future the beauty of sustainable development from the legal point of view is that it says that we must use the resources for our need in such a way that we leave some portions of it so that the future generation will also use it to survive so you must use the resources only for your need and not for our greed very popularly said why do we say like this we are having certain resources for our existence for our survival right now and we must use it only for our survival because our previous generation have left something for us so that we exist in the same way we must leave something for our future generation continuity the agenda 21 talks about intergenerational equity and intragenerational equity this is a timeless spaceless spiritual principle applied in law where the past present and the future is connected where the human the flora and the fauna they are connected very interesting 1972 came brentland report one must be very careful they speak about so many things which are in the in in the year 1970 it was unthinkable for many what is this we have to think about uh, the nature think about the flora and the fauna why we should think we are the king of everything we are the sovereign of everything what we study in our uh, legal system we call it as anthropocentrism speciesism that i am the master of all rest all in this universe other than the human they have to serve me that is gone now science technology they show the interrelationship between the flora and the fauna what we even think the past is gone and the present and towards the future so the continuity is so to come back the continuity is very important principle of spirituality which we must keep in mind next is healing we must heal we must provide scope for healing how do we do that even the existing system legal system provides a scope for healing if spirituality is all about oneness happiness love fraternity there must be someone or could have been instances where somebody must have injured got injured disturbed we must provide scope for healing legal systems it is happening now 
take for example the mental health care act provides a scope for therapy those who uh, commit attempt to commit suicide they cannot be punished attempt to commit suicide is now decriminalized because you cannot punish a person who is already feeling the pain of life and he wants to end his suffering life we punish them no we don't punish them. we give them a scope for living how do we do that the therapy models are being worked out each and every state in the district offices they have such systems in place of course it's not fully functional right now in except in certain places similarly take the case of juvenile justice act which is to deal with the juveniles how we have to handle juveniles the courts it can't be in the same way how we have seen in the last 200 to 300 years of the legal aspects of the civilization so they say we need to handle children differently juveniles differently with kindness and tenderness how do we have to handle it? the last talks about psychotherapy is being brought to the court there are so many of my psychotherapy friends who go to court to deal with the juveniles so there there is also a healing aspect which is very much involved then you have finally if we follow all those things the well being is assured the well being is just not only social economic and political and legal it is psychological and spiritual finally keep in mind human is just not only social human is just not only political or economic or legal there is something beyond though we say human nature but in the human nature we have a being we have a self we say right myself where is that self self is never explained anywhere it's very interesting but law also recognizes self we say himself where is self nowhere it is explained in law even the general classes act which explains what is a person they have not explained what is a self because it is beyond our explanation or that is how it is whomsoever constitutes the self in the way in which he or she wants to constitute that's the self himself themself myself herself when self is there how can self be only social or only economic or only political or only legal it can't be that's why i used to say i had suggested it in many places when constitution talks about that we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign social secular democratic republic and everything and they say secure justice that is social economic and political i have been saying in many places we must add the word psychological and spiritual also because the justice which we need to attend attempt to and then acquire accomplish for the society for the state which is social economic and political and immediately what follows they have given a methodology of how we have to achieve what is that equality of status and opportunity liberty freedom of thought speech expression faith belief and worship fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual all these are psychological principles how do we achieve it in the social form how do we achieve it in the economic form how do we achieve it in the political processes yes we can provide systems but equality liberty fraternity dignity integrity unity is psychological of course i am using the word psychological otherwise i would very well use the word only spiritual it's because it is spirit so to come back so what do we do how do we achieve it says this is the method the core values that we have which is constitutional law there both spirituality and the constitutional law are applied in practical application we we must bring inclusivity we must include subjectivity as well as subjectivity we must include disciplines of all experience and then in the process of the work we must talk about continuity we must talk about healing we must talk about well being then comes if we have it how do we have practice applied spirituality spiritual experience what is the spiritual experience here it is oneness multiplicity and harmony 
as a result of which we will be applying it how will we applying it equality liberty fraternity and then spiritual knowledge and values which are these things which are coming in the practical application and the process in the work because we have to start from somewhere we have to start from where we are so we already have some amount of knowledge let us start from there we can't start afresh so to so spiritual experience and spiritual knowledge and values if you combine both it becomes applied spirituality or true spirituality in my understanding of course there can be many models i don't know but this is how i have worked out because i wanted to make it work for legal systems inclusive of executive governance administration legislature policy making and law right law legal drafting and judicial interpretations so spiritual experience is a separate domain which we all need to work that is the two currently we are teaching legal reasoning also or even normal reasoning rationality and logical sense by experience we tell people you must understand we always say you must understand the word understand is also very interesting for me ideally it should be four stand understand means our uh, it is understanding means already the senses have experienced something so we have to fall within that ambit that's why we say do you understand very interesting you know in english also i, have, I used to observe these kind of things when we have a spiritual experience we tend to communicate differently so spiritual values can also aid to spiritual experience and spiritual experience can also aid to spiritual values and spiritual knowledge so it is a two way process in the educational field we must te- talk about teach about research about the spiritual values in an intellectual analytical rational reasonable logical way so that they all can aid us towards the process to have that experience or if you have the experience they can actually also come down to the level of the mind emotion sensation of the body and it can also operate so either we should talk about oneness or we should have experience of oneness experience of oneness without application of it is not useful or talking about oneness of it without experiencing it is also not useful so we must bridge it's a two way process mutual and complementary so <clears throat> i'm sorry i'm little rushing through but that's how this subject is maybe uh just a minute i will show you this slide here so how do we do that all the participants how many are here in number today i am seeing close to say 25 30 okay so you, you, you whatever that you are some may be interested in education right some may be interested in training some may be interested in integration some may be interested in application no one knows what you are going to pursue we all don't know you may be interested in thinking or interested or thinking about teaching or higher research so you can bring spirituality by experience as well as by knowledge or combination of both ideally in your teaching and in your research find out the knowledge find out the values how it is applicable to us or you can undertake training which is experiential and skills oriented which is what i am doing for uh, uh, lawyers corporates law teachers judicial academy where i teach judges that there is an experience which is possible which will make you think differently as a result of which skills become different or you can integrate go and find out what the problems that are there in the society assess them diagnose them where the issues are and apply these values of oneness apply these values of liberty apply these values of fraternity apply means you have to insist you have to work you have to change the law you have to bring the governance you have to make the interpretation it's a quite a long work but that is what we want instead of going through a trial and error experimentation which is very costly so application for prevention correction and cost removal there are so many problems which with the help of spiritual value can we can prevent them from happening or if it is already there we can course correct them with our approach we can change the interpretation of things or we can even remove the causes of it take for example just to give an example oh okay next slide is full of examples so what do we do next nine fold elements of what we keep here which we saw here oneness multiplicity harmony non sectarianism non dogmatism integration of knowledge 
continuity healing and well being if we have this in our education if we have this in our training if we have this in our integration if we have this in our application applied spirituality and the impact of applied spirituality to life achieves the thing which we all want to achieve we all want a better society we all want a beautiful humanity we all want to live collectively harmoniously progress and see everyone is happy everyone is peaceful but in order to make everyone peaceful everyone happy and everyone get all that they want with freedom that sense of oneness must start from within so it can be taught through educational institutions coming into us at the same time we can also said by said proceed with our search and seeking and then there can be a merge who knows there are so many students of mine who have studied this they even have become judicial officers i used to ask them so do you get any opportunity to reflect on they used to say yes we did see we do see is such a happy thing once in a while it happens to me but it's such a happy thing that i get on that day i feel so happy and elated wow somebody is thinking of oneness and he has the power as a judge to impact or someone who has become a think tank in a, a, a parliamentary research foundation or any other thing he says sir i am able to understand what you are saying i am able to see i am able to bring the impact so ultimately everything is there in our mind instead of using the mind in a dogmatic and reductionist way we can open it up and when i open it up and the interaction that i make with xy is that they also get opened up slowly slowly gradually so i will give you one more example of how i do it if you see this slide you will understand this is the vision and mission i kept for myself you can also do it i would request all the participants go back home today think of what you want to do in life what is your mission what is your mission what is the process how we are going to do it so i will show my vision and mission which i worked out 6 years back it will give you a clear clarity of how do we proceed what is my core area of work prevention of injustice or injury correction and removal of the process i cannot digest this when injury takes place to someone i feel very painful i don't know since my childhood it was like this if somebody is hurt i feel as if i am hurt i used to wonder why am i feeling like this initially i thought there is something wrong with me but later on i thought no it is not wrong i have an empathy maybe i am very sensitive people may say from a psychological point of view whatever be it but slowly i converted that into my strength so i started teaching we must prevent injury we must correct all the mistakes that are happening we must remove the causes which are creating injuries so my teaching and research at jnd i visit other universities for training programs and so on this is the way in which i apply spirituality in my own way applied spirituality means each and every one have to take in their respective field whatever that you belong to then stage 2 which is my area of interest in my work i want to bring new interpretation to law and policies the legal policies that's my core way i have been saying that law doesn't distinguish the values doesn't distinguish but the human mind which doesn't understand experience that equality it is distinguishing by nature obviously because it doesn't have the experience so my area of interest in the work that i am doing is to bring a new thinking a shift in the thinking a shift in the consciousness a shift in the awareness as a result of which i feel governance of social psychological well being areas of human life is a goal that's the process i am working on where do i want to bring an impact what are the impacts that i am looking for my core area is students teachers peers the scholars judges law makers i always uh, go happily for any fdp when they call because fdp is the area the space where law teachers are doing poor research and they are formulating the problem statement assessing the problem and diagnosing the problem and they are suggesting the solution 
there i chip in i tell them think different so i am very focused on that similarly the judicial offices interpretation in the academy in which i visit teachers and so on so i bring impact on that plane then sorry just where do i bring an impact yeah this is the one how do i make it happen immersive and intense workshops of course six months i teach this paper training and capacity building for participants students teachers feet this for the judges think tanks law makers i think this what tools do i use yeah i need a tool i just don't just sit and they meditate before everybody are asking everyone to meditate no i analyze everything i bring psychology i bring neurology i bring spiritual tools i combine everything and then i allow the students to undergo the experience and then their value systems change i ask them do you feel a different thinking right now after this they say yes sir i got it that is the solution which if you feel that you have changed the action that comes out from your hand will also change so my tools that i use analytical psychological neurological spiritual tools that's why i studied psychotherapy neurolinguistic programming hypnotherapy solution therapy so many therapies in the last 4 5 years i did and that also helped me to understand the pure analytical the mere analytical to the spiritual which is a vast gap according to this mind so i bridged all of them through psychology psychotherapy neurology and so on. so it brings authenticity to the experience which each and every participant has some examples if i can give they are take the case of say abortion or you can even say uh, let me take uh, the suicide which is a hot topic in tunisia there is a case that is pending in the supreme court the biggest question is can one end one's life by choice supreme court also came up with the idea of what is called living will and so on i am not going into that but the fundamental question is do i have a right to end my life by choice and by will is that contemplated in the indian constitution under part 3 of the indian constitution which talks about fundamental rights there are two strong views one view is that no you cannot end your life by your choice because you did not create it it came down how it came down they speak about religion philosophy spirituality sense and so on there is another group which says no we have every right to end our life the way we want it's a choice sometime back i attended one of the medical conferences where i need to, to explain this i asked why do we discuss this they said the euthanasia has become a very serious thing as a result of which insurance companies are coming up they are saying that we must promote passive euthanasia the silent killing of it if we find the patient is not going to survive is crossing the threshold of what is called the permanent vegetative state pvs then we must end the life this is the argument that comes from the insurance lobby they say <clears throat> i told them what is the idea behind the promoting or not promoting they said they told many doctors with whom i discuss this they said no no we need to give relief to the persons who is in a permanent vegetative state i said the why do you think about relief for the other person they said the person is undergoing pain i said if the person is undergoing the pain then that is not a permanent vegetative state permanent vegetative state is a state in which there is no pain which means when a person is not having any pain how will we obtain concern from the person that i am going to end your life and i am your near and dear it hits the constitutional foundation of consent so far the libertarian view spoke so much about the concept of freedom it is now in deadlock they don't know what to do with this i told them from a spiritual point of view 
when a person wants to end life if someone thinks i want to die he must die but the thinking is not allowing him to die or thinking does not cause death which means there is something else other than you are thinking which is beyond death which death cannot bring which thought cannot push death so when someone says i want to die and commit suicide or passive with me shall whatever be there are different forms of it i am not doing that someone thinks that i want to end my life he is unable to end his life unless and until he takes an extreme measure of jumping from a cliff or taking a poison which means your choice is not affecting the death immediately to your body which means there is a connection or a disconnection between your mind or a choice and will and to the body and the breath what is that i told them from a spiritual point of view it is the soul we cannot die if you want to die otherwise when i want to have a choice in the society to buy a particular product i do that when i want to eat i put a will and then i eat it's my choice i exercise it it is my right i do it but when it comes to the cessation of the body to stop the life i am unable to do it unless and until i do something else into the body to stop it even when a poison is put in the body or jumping from a cliff the body is not immediately dying it withers in pain to survive again and again that's why it screams that's why it struggles that suffering is suffering to enter the life suffering to come back to life after a point of time the argument went into saying that oh, unless we have the spiritual experience we cannot experience what you are saying we cannot accept what we are saying i said that's the point so if there is a capability or a scope or a possibility to have the experience we will understand and review the entire attempt to commit suicide in a different way totally different then they said no it could be a problem of say if somebody has to be in a vegetative state for say 40 years like what happened in india the case of a uh, popular case in mumbai where a lady had to be in a permanent vegetative state for 38 years but then the nurses uh, who nursed her they said that she is very conscious even in the permanent vegetative state which the modern science calls it as permanent vegetative state in which consciousness does not exist the nurses say that she is very conscious though she may be lying in a vegetative state if some new stranger enters the room her body withers that means there is some kind of an inner sense that is witnessing the whole thing can we stop that by thinking that no this person is suffering law doesn't give this proof but to simple jurisprudential or legal or constitutional logic is that what you cannot create you cannot control that is the fundamental bedrock of the legal philosophy and legal thinking by which we are controlling everything or we are removing control from everything only that which you have created you can control the ownership and property and the legal attestation comes with that so this question can be resolved only by spiritual understanding only by spiritual thing only by spiritual understanding of issues similarly take the case of same sex same sex sexuality and so on supreme court remove decriminalize that particular provision from a spiritual angle to say in the spiritual sense in the spiritual self and spiritual experience the being doesn't have a gender it is only the body does body which has the gender except a reproductive part and that also now can be changed within a day so from a spiritual standpoint we don't see if you are in a spiritual state of experience you don't see boy or girl man or woman you see only a being a soul which is continuously evolving whether one is advocating same sexual marriage or same sexuality yes or no we are not going into that but we must have a clarity that same sexuality is not a disorder if the person is thinking in that way in which he or she is having the orientation about his or her own bodily autonomy and privacy of it it is his or her own whether you like it or i like it i don't like it you don't like it is totally a different matter to discuss but from a, in a public sphere that person cannot be discriminated because he is having a different orientation different from the 
normal heteronormativity he is different you can't even call that is different or alternative he is what he is she is what she is we can go little deeper into that i am not going into that i don't have much time on that but what i want to say here is that spiritual thinking spiritual feeling and spiritual experiencing gives a reasoning which is inclusive by nature which is continuous in nature which is integrating all forms of knowledge very interesting it is so we must understand the role of spirituality the application of spirituality because if that is what our aim of life and vocation and studies and research is to bring something to the society which is everlasting and meaningful and we want to be a part of it we don't have any other tool except spiritual tool i am not exaggerating here i am not you know like a conventional school teacher who says his subject is the ultimate subject not that way i am talking of a subject of course i belong to that subject subject is not mine i belong to that subject which is unifying by nature which is integrating in its content which is equalizing in its dimensions which is giving an experience of all time spaceless boundless timeless experience yet within time and yet within space and within the world and life that is the beauty of it last only one example i would like to give afterwards i can take questions if there are any questions participants feel free to ask me any questions recently i was working on uh, a paper called uh, mediation i teach mediation also in my university i feel mediation is one of the best methods for litigation management and litigation organization so in fact i i in fact i am going to contribute that paper also to the jindal uh, uh, university at the center which is going to come up with some uh, innovative uh, writings and ideas the point is a mediator needs a spiritual understanding i'll give you a quick example even from a legal point of view even even from the mediation jurisprudence or mediation of science or mediation of art they say a mediator ought to be neutral he cannot be biased there should not be any cognitive bias how do you bring a person without cognitive bias in the mediation when the person is meeting two parties in their life very difficult if you go by the existing mind emotion sensation of the body which is cramped and crowded with the existing experience of society and social baggage then we will be biased so in order to remove ourselves from the cognitive bias and to be neutral and to be aware of both the parties we have to step back so when we step back to the higher self the inner self we are equal we are one we are free we are also at the same time motivating parties to go in harmony Win win situation. Does it not happen for the mediator? Is that not the mediator's ultimate quality? Is about arbitrator's ultimate quality. One of the most interesting thing that happens in the arbitration, the award which is being challenged in the high court or the supreme court is that all the time parties say this particular arbitrator or mediator is very biased, but that bias cannot be explained in the courts. They say no, I felt that he is biased. He is siding on that. particular complaint he is siding towards that side how do you say there is no object to prove that he is biased it's only words and thoughts so a mediator or an arbitrator or a facilitator or a negotiator to be free from all bias he must remain and step back and in the higher consciousness he must live number one only in the higher consciousness you will be equal to both and number two you will be free from unnecessary reactions which will come out of cognitive bias which will come out of all things and at the same time this higher self and the inner self gives you a fraternity a harmony a compassion and love by which you can motivate both the parties to arrive at a win win situation 
which is not the case in the existing legal system that is adversarial in nature, where one person wins and the other person loses. Very difficult. So, the Supreme Court is now saying that let us go for mediation. Now, there is a movement that is going on in the Indian legal system that we must mandate mediation for certain things. The role of mediator, the job of mediator is going to pick up like anything in the years to come. Already the draft is ready. Even the online dispute resolution where negotiation, mediation, facilitation, peace building which is going to take place according to Niti Ayyab report where the former Honorable Justice A.K. Sikri has neatly outlined how we have to move about in the coming era of legal system and the social, political governance. He talks about what is the legal health of this state, legal health of a nation, why society is so litigious in which one person wins and the other person loses as a result of which unhappiness, relationships get estranged. So he speaks about mediation as an important thing. Supreme Court has even produced, it's very interesting to say this here, I enjoyed when this document came. Supreme Court has produced a manual on how to conduct mediation. They have even given a template of how to do it. But then how will you do it unless you have that inner experience which is free from bias, the sense of oneness. Unless you have the empathy, the love, the kindness, which motivates both the parties to have win-win situation. So mediator ought to have a freedom. A mediator ought to be reactionless, non-reactionary. A mediator ought to be compassionate and empathetic. And finally, mediator has to be very practical. He has to what they call balancing the costs, social costs, economic costs, psychological costs, political costs, family costs. Hundreds of costs are now coming. How do we balance it? So a mediator's role is very crucial. Which means the legal system from the point of view of judiciary, they are slowly trying to push people to move towards non-adversarial system in which win-win situation is for both. Initially, it was an eBay experiment in America where the university, uh, Wisconsin University, they did the template through online dispute mediation. How do we solve these eBay disputes? Within a week, they could solve 200 disputes. Why? Because they removed the procedures, unnecessary, cumbersome, difficult procedures. And a person who is having the knowledge of what the online mediation is, online dispute is all about, a person who is knowing how eBay works, how markets work, how online database is used, online digital platform is used for business, he understands the whole pulse of it, the knowledge of it, and he is interested in solving the dispute. You understand the core of mediation, the truth of mediation, the essence of mediation is nothing but being compassionate to both the sides. How do we get that? Is the biggest challenge. So now they are including in the mediation material, training material, which I'm going to do very soon next year, is psychotherapy and psychology and neurology and solution for this to Australian government judiciary did an interesting experience called Solution Focused Grief Therapy, SFBT. What does it say? It says that the judges should know how to ask questions, not the advocates, not the clients, not the defense and the prosecution, but the judges will take the responsibility. What they call it as the miracle question. We know how to ask you a question by which we will be able to solve your problem. Some of the interesting guidelines that they give is that don't go backward, move forward. Which means your question should be about how, not why. Very interesting. They say it's not about why. Don't analyze the cause. Tell me what do you want right now? How do you think I can help you to move forward? So they have given five questions, which is supposed to be the question for 
solution focused brief therapy which is popularly used in europe for students counseling and so on now judiciary is adopting it i see lot of interesting intersections taking place in many aspects of governance where the constitution is being taken or the legal charter of a nation is being taken to see that the executive legislature judiciary the three organs what they call the montesquian tripartite structure the executive legislature judiciary they have to work in tandem in harmony and policy making is also slowly intervening now there is there are two to three groups in delhi i know well they are very good in policy write ups and they do lot of research for parliament and law making and so on some of them are my school students very interesting work is being carried so if you i observed those people who are uh, working on this they have a different how do i say should i say temperament or attitude or aptitude i don't know. but a certain skill in which they are interested in solving a problem they don't want to discuss what went wrong it's only analysis paralysis only to know where we need to work but afterwards immediately starts the work so they are able to produce so much of material it's precisely because their focus is they may not call it spiritual but i am seeing it as spiritual because they are interested in solving a problem solving a problem means considering the present and having a direction towards the future with an idea that we will integrate knowledge from all the sources not just law but also from psychology but also from science technology and everything all disciplines are now converging it is here to complete that i feel when uh, general university the school of public policy and governance when i came to know about that center for uh, complexity economics and applied spirituality got into my uh, thinking i felt my god this is so important those students who are studying this course they will understand the value of it when you enter into the career world or if you are interested in transformational work social engineering work if you are interested in public policy work if you are interested in some meaningful work for the society be it your own community religion whatever be it, you want to transcend your narrow limitation and give yourself to few people outside you you cannot avoid thinking of the public and the policy which you need to put in for which the tool is in the spiritual domain you cannot avoid this so i felt so happy many times i contacted uh, uh, professor naresh singh and uh, ms divya and two people i said i am all for it please count me in and whatever help that you need from my side of course i come from a legal strong legal background it's spiritual and psychological only these two so i would like to give all my best i said because i can see the whole legal system is currently undergoing a huge transformational shift because of the problems that are coming in from every direction but it can go in a direction which is positive as well as integrating only when it takes the matter to the axis the core which is exactly where thinking needs to be done where policy needs to be put for which you require the spiritual dimension the spiritual experience and the spiritual values so i see it as a very good sign and i consider it as in fact my great honor to give this lecture at jindal university which is one of the premier universities in the country and professor naresh singh is doing an important thing in the he is going to guide us in the book publication and the conference which for which i am eagerly waiting ms divya also knows that i would urge all the participants to give as best as possible as much as possible because my last point the entire technology is full the entire digital space is getting overflowing 
we have tried social justice we have tried economic distributive justice we have tried political justice process we have tried the legal justice processes all are working but it is not enough it is not sufficient we need something which can connect all this what is it that's the spirituality the spiritual sense and the spiritual values so with these words i i don't know whether i have crossed the time or not i think well i am oh, you have not we have we still have five minutes so it's good. okay if there are any questions or any comments which you can share i will be sharing certain articles to all of you through email kindly go through that take your time but i am 100% sure in fact i am 200% sure that this knowledge is going to be the future knowledge for all of us if you work on this right now not only your future career is assured but there will also be a great satisfaction of what we are doing this is nothing demeaning to any other field of discipline but there is there must be one discipline which must be capable of integrating everything that is fun that's adventure for me so with these words i thank you professor naresh singhji for yes, giving sir. me this opportunity and ms divya also the entire team this opportunity i will certainly visit the uh, general in the times to come in july absolutely yes. thank you so much thanks, thanks very much uh, professor parameswaram Param. the let me just take a few minutes and see though i'm sure it's such a lucid uh, clear i don't think we've had such a a lucid talk on this subject matter before and so blending it so well to the needs of students was really amazing so let me see if the students probably have some questions for you because this was directly relevant to students and uh, who will move on to careers of various kinds so let's open up the floor anybody has comment question now is your chance this happens to be the final lecture as well of the of the course you can uh, you know put on your video and uh, ask a question make a comment uh good evening this is anand can you hear me yeah go Hi. ahead anand yes please uh hello doctor session uh, um I have a couple of points I'm, I'm made a note on. Made a note of couple of points. So uh, when you talk about the law, law generally uh, says that uh, uh, perform activities like this, or there is a, a direction, or there are some kind of instructions, or, and then it says either you do this or you get punished, or if you don't do this, you get punished. Something like that. But when you talk about spirituality, spirituality does not punish. or the, the idea of punishment is not there in spirituality so this this point i made at the beginning of uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, lectures that we have in this evening so uh, don't we see a paradigm or a radical difference between i'm not equating law and spirituality per se i'm not doing that but when we talk about spiritual applied spirituality in law because both the um, the the uh, core is entirely different isn't it? so how do we uh, uh, discuss or how do we have to take it so that's one question <laughs> the other question is um, uh, is article 17 of the un charter which is a freedom of religion has a huge impact in the deterioration of spirituality in the world so these are two questions about that. thanks thanks uh, over to you baram yeah the first question the legal system which is full of do's and don'ts if i heard it properly you say that legal system consists of do's and don'ts and it punishes yeah. people whereas yeah. the spirituality is uh, embracing and then it is wanting to open encompassing up. everything yes yeah. is everything the difference is the crucial the crux of the matter is that legal system has do's and don'ts but not law so there is a huge difference between law as an umbrella discipline out okay. of which came the legal system which is rules and regulations which the society has created through representatives so we need to understand for that is why all legal system rules and regulations are continuously tested on the parameters of law which is core the law means equality liberty fraternity but the legal system which comes out of it you do this you don't do this right or wrong it has to be tested what is what we call it as constitutionality tests Okay. is there it is ultra aware of the constitution or intra aware of the constitution so legal system is a product of law 
and it can be superior or inferior depending upon the social consciousness and the social awareness by which they want and they create what they want and they apply it and ultimately in the legal system also you should keep in mind the people who are working in the legal system the human beings like you and me they also have their own imperfections like everyone else only thing is they have taken the role of a ruler as a result of which we think and presume that they have to be equal and fair and they have to give chance to all but if you go <laughs> deep inside they are also like us we can't help them and they also can't help absolutely so that, yeah that is one thing so we have to distinguish like i always i even have another categorization law the umbrella discipline out of which comes the legal system and there is one more angle called justice whether law is connecting with justice or not also continuously needs to be seen because society is really evolving so i used to say it, it it has to be legal not legal education but justice education but people are against me people don't accept that with me it's because it is a very strong uh, uh, idea because that right. only can solve the problem legal education is continuously again and again we are going into legal which is what we are creating we need right. to create a thing to connect to the essence of law which is justice right but what has happened justice also is very stupid in the sense it is either social justice or it is distributive justice or political justice or process of justice with that we have stopped nobody speaks of psychological justice or spiritual justice but things are opening up now yeah no i i also teach victimology no victim is happy with the compensation or seeing the offender going to the jail a victim feels that i should have been walking on the road confidently innocently and with a pure feeling of what i am and that is being disturbed by giving 20000 rupees to me and then punishing an offender doesn't mean anything to me they are now slowly coming to that so this right, right. somewhat answers the question yeah this is yes yes, yes. yes. this is excellent uh, thanks yeah. a lot the, uh, the our time is uh, now up i know students tend to have other classes and so to go oh, okay. what i would like to do though in order to thank you uh, and to also end our course is to ask all our students who are here now and who can put on their video to do that and i wonder whether chesta or divya can take a shot of the screen so we have uh, dr parameshwar ram with us as well on this final class and we take a little picture i think that would be great so can you those of you who can put your camera on please do so we'll take a shot and we, that will bring us to the end of our uh, class our course and some people i'm seeing for the first time no these i have seen before that's might might see some people for the first time who else will switch your camera on please jester can you dipali sai is here good I guess they are all busy fixing their hair, uh, Doctor Parvin. So. <laughs> no, it's fine. Absolutely fine. You know how it is. When I come next time, uh, physically I can meet all of them. You will see everybody. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, we have a few. Um, so let's take a picture with a few. That. Uh, but uh, while we are doing that, let me also thank you once again, Param. This has been phenomenal. It was so good, clear, to the point, well thought through. Six months of work in less than ninety minutes, phenomenal. So, what can I say? But warm thanks to you. We look forward to organizing your visit uh, in the next semester, and I will be organizing a lecture for you in the law school. I'd like to hear the reaction of law students to your thinking and your work as yes, well sir. as a lecture in the policy yes. school. And yes, of course, we will proceed with our work on our book project. Yes. Thanks again to all, and that uh, brings us all of students. You all know that your uh, the exam is now set for the twenty second. I think you are all aware of that, and uh, you know the details and so on already. So thanks again. It was great having you for this course. Feel free to keep in touch by email or whatever method.